Oh, it's a good boy. It's a good boy. Here's one with her bandana. Yeah. Oh, so handsome. Welcome to the Thunderbird Farm Handcrafted. In this week's video, we are doing something super close to my heart, and that is making something for the littles in your life. Uh, that has been a theme for me and a lot of my sewing. And so when we get into the healing part, we'll dive into that a little bit. But if you're new here to our channel, please click subscribe. My name is Genevieve. I'm so excited to sew with you today and to share the healing part of sewing. In this week's video, we're gonna make some doggy treaty bags. Now, I am a part of My Little Shindig's freaking fabulous fabric club. There's a wait list and I love Katie and the prints that she picks out. You'd never know what you're gonna get. And also you get a mystery pattern. This pattern was from Lauren over at Mormino. If you don't follow her already, please head over and um, check out the details. I do have a link to her channel um, as well as Katie's Facebook group so they can get on the waiting list for the freaking fabulous fabric club. I love the name. And uh, Lauren showed you how in this month, how to make these vinyl top and then using cotton uh, woven and then uh, some canvas on the inside lining, how to make a really quick little treat bag. Uh, and it was so much fun, just a really great sew. Um, I know you can do this with your um, domestic machines and I mainly did mine um, on my industrial machine and my serger. So I do share what I did with my serger on this, but if you want the full pattern, head over to Lauren Mormino's channel um, so that you can check out that pattern as well because I'm not gonna share any of the measurements for that or the cutting out of that, okay? Just kind of how I judged it up. Um, what I did with these and where it kind of comes into the creative entrepreneur or the creative seller um, is I made these fun doggy treaty bag kits. Now, if you're a baker like my daughter is, you could also add to this some homemade doggy treats. But what we did was we put inside a little doggy scrunchy bandana okay and that just means it has elastic on the back instead of having to go through the collar or to be tied on so we made some really cute reversible one of those and then I found on Amazon really cheap um, little rubber balls um, every dog loves a ball Apollo's staring at this one right now so uh, definitely this is just a fun so I'm going to share the measurements for my dog bandanas um, so that you can make more of those. But if you are not a part of the freaking fabulous fa uh, fabric club, I hope you head over to My Little Shindig and get your name on the waiting list to be a part of it because every month so far has really been amazing. If you're looking for timestamps of this particular video, whether to go in right to the doggy bandana or if you'd like to know how I kind of zhuzhed up the pattern from Lauren over at Mormino, um, you can check all of that out by going into the details of this video and clicking on the timestamps that are in the video. Um, so feel free to go and do that. Uh, or when you're watching this again, when you're actually doing the sewing, like what I do is I kind of then go into the timestamps. So definitely check out the timestamps. Again, subscribe, like, comment. If you have any questions about anything that I use, I try to link all of that as well, but feel free to, to ask any questions. Share with me if you did, if you're a part of the freaking fabulous fa of fabric club with my little shindig, or you made these bags before and did some other type of kit, I'd love to hear your ideas for the types of kits we could create um, just using this pattern um, because I think it's just a great, um, quick and easy, easy sew uh, and a, a great way for us creative sellers to reproduce and, and kind of speak to our own niche and our, our own audience. So let's get to the sewing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give you the measurements for the different size bandanas. And then I'm gonna show you how I cut them out uh, real quickly. I'm gonna be making some um, fall themed ones today. I have a couple orders for these. That is one of the beauties of something quick and simple like this project is that you can pump a lot of them out. So again, for those of you who are makers, uh, who are also creative entrepreneurs, this is a great um, production type of piece. 
Um, I am also adding these fun tags. These tags here are from Carolina's Little Stitches, the boo ones that I have on the Halloween ones. And these tags say, may contain dog hair, uh, and they are from Mormy Now, Lauren over at Mormy Now. So I'm gonna be adding those to the fall ones. So let's get started. I'm gonna give you the measurements for each of the sizes, and then I'll show you how I cut this out. So for the small, you're going to cut out your squares, 12 inches square, okay, for the small. And then for your um, scrunchy part, you're gonna be cutting them nine inches long by three inches wide, okay? So that's for the smalls. This is Apollo's, of course, you can see he's a little wrinkly. Um, he's upset with me that I took it off of him. Uh, the medium sized ones, you're gonna cut these as 14 inch squares, okay? And then you're going, for the scrunchy part, you're going to do the same, the 10 by three, okay? And then for the large, you're gonna be cutting 15 inch squares, but for the scrunchy part, you're gonna be doing a 12 by three, okay? So I'll have those measurements in the details for you so that if you want to make a specific size for your fur baby, or if you're looking to uh, make these production for a craft show or to sell on, in your shop, you're able to get those measurements. All right, we're gonna set our tags aside and I'm gonna show you with this um, cotton woven. Cotton woven is really the, the best for that or flannel um, is also a really great doggy bandana fabric. We're gonna be cutting out squares that then we turn into the triangles. Now, if you're doing like these, I have them reversible. So if you're doing like these, you're gonna cut it into triangles. But if you're just doing both sides, uh, the same, you're gonna leave it a square, okay? So let me make sure my fabric is all lined up. And we're just gonna straighten this out, okay? And then I'm making a large one. So we're going to first find, oh, my son made me that pinch pot when he was in like third grade maybe. <laughs> um, okay. So we're gonna do 12 inches. I know I could go to the end instead of counting, which usually makes sure that I don't screw anything up. So we're gonna recount four, four, four. Okay. And I'm just gonna zip it right across cause I'm gonna need pieces over there as well. So I can fold this up. Maybe make a couple more later today. All right. And now I'm gonna do make this 12 again. Okay. Oh, that was for a small. Okay, well here, I'm making two smalls. <laughs> Oy vey. All right, well, there's two smalls for later today. If you hear me sniffling, I apologize. It is allergy season here, and I tell you what, it has hit me rough this year. Rough, rough, rough. Okay, so actually I'm gonna just leave this because I might be able to get a second or a third um, small one. I need 15. I need 15 inches, not 12. So there's that. So now I know I need um, for the larges 12 by threes. So let's see here. I'm gonna need 12. Oh. I always like to have a little bit of space. 12 by three and I'm not gonna get two out of this. So there's one large. So I had two larges and three smalls. So I need another 12 by three. Can I use these for the smalls? I can, okay. I can use these for the smalls. What in the world? This is, see, this is what happens when I'm on allergy medicine. So there, I need to cut an inch off of these for the small to be 10 by three. So let's see here. 
this is a small, small, put, put them together. Oi, 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 oi. All right, and then this is a small, where did I go with, there we go. This is a large, there we go. All right, I have a small and a large yet. We need to be careful. Careful with this. We need a 12 inch. Listen, even the most experienced sewist. It's one of the reasons I love Lauren over at Mormy Now. I don't know if you've um, followed her yet, but if you don't, um, go and subscribe to her channel. She does these really great um, YouTube live sews. I'm not there yet, Lauren, I'm not there yet. I'm a little nervous about doing it live, obviously, because even recording, <laughs> I look sloppy and unprofessional. <laughs> she has this great shirt, um, because I guess someone commented that she was kind of sloppy and unprofessional, and that just cracks me up, because it makes me wonder, is that person doing anything amazing like Lauren's doing? Most likely not. All right, so now I need to make this one because this is a small, good Lord, sisters. All right, we're gonna do, yeah, because I'm one inch in. So we're gonna do a 10 by three. Lauren, I'm with you, girl. We can be sloppy and unprofessional together. All right, so let's go over this again. Again, I'll share the medium, even though I'm not making a medium. You're going to cut your squares out for your smalls. They're going to be 12 by 12. Your strip is gonna be 10 by three, okay? For your mediums, your squares are going to be 14 by 14. You're gonna use the same measurement, 10 by three for the scrunchy piece. And then for your larges, we're going to do 15 by 15 and then 12 inch by three for your scrunchie piece. Now, if you were going to make these reversible, what you would do is you cut out your two, two uh, prints, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're going, when you fold it in half, all right, and you meet your corners, you're just gonna cut along your long edge, okay? So that you can piece them together. That's what I did with these, all right, so that they were able to be reversible. Okay, once you have it folded in half, and if you're doing the reversible, you would do this to each individual piece, okay? But I'm gonna lay it here on my mat, and I'm gonna look at it from the point and cut it in two inches, okay? All right, so I'm gonna cut that triangle off, all right? So that when I open it, I have this piece here now that I can sew that in so that looks nice and neat. So just with the two side corners, all right? There's that. So I'm gonna do that for my three that I have, and then I'm gonna take this and sew that nice, probably press it, and then we're gonna turn it for ones that are not reversible and you're keeping that this has a fold, you would turn this inside out to be able to prep to sew your seams and then you're gonna turn it through your holes that you have open there.
Okay, so now we're going to piece these together and we're going to add our um, Carolina Little Stitches um, little cute tags um, to them. So what we want to do is, because since they're reversible, I want to see, you know, even though this fabric from my little shindig um, isn't directional, sometimes it looks directional just depending on how you cut it. So that one looks all right. So I'm going to, let me see if I can find one of these that kind of doesn't look, yeah, okay. So we're going to, this is going to be the one that's facing, this is going to be the top. So I'm going to take my little tag and I'm going to just, it's not going to be fully to the edge because I want to be able to see it, but it's going to be there close enough that I can catch it. First things first is we're going to turn these right side out and press them flat. We're going to head over and we're going to top stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna take our um, the collar part, the part that's kind of like the scrunchie, and uh, we're going to fold them in half. I like to use my serger for something like this only because it really gives it a good solid um, hem here. Um, you know, like, and that way you have to worry, like, you know, because it's going to be something getting taken on and off. Um, so I'm just going to serge all of these and then turn them right side out. Once I have these all turned right side out, I'm going to press them and then come back and cut my elastic. My elastic is going to be two inches shorter than what my piece is here. Okay, so two inches smaller than what the scrunchy area is. Okay, so we're gonna Make that an 11. One of our elastics and one of our scrunchy cover areas. I'm going to use my big safety pin. I'm going to push it down in there until we get to the edge here. All right, once I have the edge, make sure that everything is pulled all the way through here. This one isn't. Okay, so I'm gonna try to center it as much as I can. And then we're gonna just surge right over top. This is what's nice about a serger is this also really secures your elastic.
scrappy project, um, perfect for something like the My Little Shindig um, fabric, uh, Fabulous Fabric Club. Okay, so something we're gonna do a little bit differently than um, Lauren over at Mormino is I'm not gonna leave these edges raw. She does say that you could put some binding on them, but I wanna try to keep the, these at a reasonably, uh, dis, you know, a, a specific price. Um, so I'm just gonna serge my ends. So we're gonna get it to where it starts. I'm probably gonna hand crank just a couple times till I get through a couple of the layers. And then, okay, now I have my corners sewn. You wanna do this, you don't just wanna serge them or when you flip your um, bag back together, serging is never like super tight stitched. Um, so you wanna always have, like especially on something like this, um, you won't see your stitches when you flip it. So we're gonna just serge these two ends like so. There we go. So now all of this is surged so that it looks, looks nice on the inside. So the big healing part for me has been throughout my entire, he's loving the, the massages. <laughs> the healing part for me in this has really been critiquing my sewing throughout the years for those who matter to me. When my kids were little, they both got clothing handmade for them. When my husband and I first got married and even still curtains and home decor and most definitely our fur baby gets some love from the sewing machine. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Please put in there, who do you sew for? Who do you make for? It is definitely the healing part uh, as Apollo loves his clothing, his bandanas, as well as my kids loved princess dresses and brand new bow ties and all sorts of fun stuff. And I always have received comp compliments from family members on anything that I make for our home. So share with me in the comments, who do you sew for? I'd love to hear about it. I hope you enjoyed this week's sew time with me here at the Thunderbird Handcrafted. My name is Genevieve. Again, please subscribe, share this with your sewing community and sewing friends. I can't wait till next week when we get to spend time together. If you aren't already, please join my Handcrafted Facebook group. The link is in the details as well. We have a shop here at the Thunderbird Farm. So if you're looking to not sew, but buy, we have a glamping farm here in central Pennsylvania. If you're ever looking to go glamping or bring your family for the first time camping, uh, check us out. Have a wonderful week.